Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another NTW3 battle for you today as we have some French cavalry, some Chesters clashing already with uh, some Hussars here of Prussia so we're starting off with a very quick and uh, action packed one for you today we do have, yeah these, looks like there's going to be a lot of cavalry going in straight away we've got even some more, we've got here Lancers, we've got some like, Lancers of the Vistula, so these are Polish Lancers being sent in, you can tell with their, like, their, uh, their helmet, what their, uh, or, like their hat but they're Polish and they've done a very good job there, they've annihilated those guys, po Polish Lancers are very elite uh, force there. But yes, we are back in the Napoleonic period here with some glorious uniforms, some glorious uh, line battles and some cannons going off. It's going to be amazing. I already know. It's a huge 4v4. We have a, I think we have two uh, 1815 Prussian armies. We have a, a Swedish army and I'm pretty sure the final army is all the way over there in the far left. We have a 1799 Russian army and we have today to face them. We have a 1840 or 1807 to 1814 Spanish army. We have Another French, oh, French army, oh yes, Spanish army, but a French army in Spain, I guess I should say. 1809 to 1812, uh, French army, so that's a very strong force, obviously. We then have the Poles coming after them, so we have some Poles in the uh, Spanish army, and we also then have an entirely independent, like, Polish force here. Then they're, Poles definitely one of my favourite looking factions. I just love them. I, <laughs> they just, they uh, just look so good, and they do, like, a lot of great feats in a... Uh, during their time with Napoleon in the uh, Napoleonic Wars, they do some uh, very good actions. Against some very good actions, I should say. And then we have Italy, anyway. That's the final army. Uh, last but not least, Italy at the back, doing their bit, leading up the rear. So I guess they are sort of last, but they're not least. Um, at least that. And you can see a lot of cavalry already forming up here. We have a lot of the Spanish armies. Cavalry. Did he bring all this cavalry? I think he did. This, yeah, this is all his cavalry. He's got at least seven units here of cavalry. That's, um, like, a lot. And he's led by, uh, got Salt here, who did spend a lot of time in the uh, Spanish Peninsula trying to deal with Wellington and, uh, his, uh, his uh, allies. He's not even looking the right way. He's that scared. He is facing the Prussians today. So, I mean, who is going to be facing? He's got some, uh, well, which general is this then? I don't know. Oh, Nisu, I see. Not a very good general, but a very uh, good, like, uh, revolutionizer of the uh, po of the Prussian armies. That's interesting to see him here today. But yeah, so if you're enjoying seeing NTW3 at the moment on the channel, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show your support. This was sent in by a member of the Discord, so if you want to send in your own NTW3 replays or any other, um, like, Total War replays, then feel free to join. The link is down below in the description. Uh, so it's nice and easy for you to find and to uh, come and join. And they're just sending forward the French just one lone unit of line infantry. This poor, well it's not even line, it's a light infantry unit. This poor light infantry unit is going to get condemned to see if uh, the uh, Prussians will bite. They're in like their, uh, sort of like winter like uniforms, they're in like white and uh, dark colours like that. They've got like great coats and uh, like long trousers on. But there you go, I can see shots going off now. We've got a, a three pounder firing off and it looks like we've got some, uh, I thought I heard some rifles going on. Oh, not rifles, but muskets going off. I can. There's some, some, uh, Jaegers in the trees here. And they're going to actually try and bait in this, uh, cavalry. What a cavalry is that? There's some dragoons. I see. This could be interesting. If they get, get these, uh, dragoons to be lured in with a unit of line infantry, they can then take them out with a Prussian cavalry. And there you go. You can see that they're taking out, uh, taken out quite nicely. And yeah, they've lured them in, and now all these line infantry behind are just able to gun. I mean, they're probably actually killing more of their own men than they are of the. Uh, yeah, certainly killing more of their own men than they are of the, of the goons. Uh, so possibly that wasn't actually a great trade. I mean, they didn't kill many, only ten or so. I mean, they're going to try and chase them down now. You can see some S Swedish hussars that are going to try and uh, swing around, but they're not going to make it in time. You can see this uh, fusilier unit here trying to get some shots off, and still unsuccessfully doing that. And now we've got some uh, Voltigeurs of the uh, Legion uh, Vistula against, again, some more Poles. It's like, even if it's, uh, they're not in the, uh, like, independent Polish army, they're now in the uh, the French army. We've got some uh, light infantry that are Polish here as well. I'm pretty sure that uh, the Le La Legion uh, de la Vistula is there, uh, the Poles. I'm pretty sure it is. It certainly is. Um, well, I can't think of it being anyone else, to be honest. There you go. The, it looks like they're going to go again. They're going to try and bite again. Oh, that's the uh, the Lancers. That's the uh, Polish Lancers. Don't lose them. I mean, I think they're just routing those Jaegers again. That was a risk. But, uh, I mean, it kind of paid off, I guess. Kind of paid off. I mean, they lost a few numbers. 
uh, from shots. But I mean, they've done okay. They got out of there fairly well. I mean, there's a solid line now forming up here for the uh, for the uh, Prussians. Over on this side, uh, you can see that the uh, Swedes are starting to uh, make some sort of a tentative approaches towards the first, this other French army here. This is the uh, 1812 army. This is the uh, one without extra poles in it, at least I'm, as far as I'm aware. Um, but they're nicely coming up in column formation. That is a very good idea. Move quicker on column and also on a road. So that's, he's getting the double bonuses there. I wonder if he's got enough carry to defend himself like the Spanish player does. Because, I mean, you can see Prussia's now bringing up some Ullens here. And uh, he's got some uh, more Ullens behind them. So some Lancers. They're getting ready. Take up position. I mean, we'll have to see what they can do. I mean, it also looks like Prussia... I, I forget that there are two Prussias. So, like, if you think Prussia's everywhere, it's because there are two Prussias. Um, I just forgot that as well. I was like, wow, this is a lot of Prussian forces. Like, they're all the way over there and here. But no, there's two. Don't know who this one's led by, but um, we've got another, another Prussian army coming up here. And they're going to try... They look like they're going to try and split between the uh, the French. It looks like the French are going to take a bit... The Spanish uh, French army is going to take a bit more of a central position now. Because it looks like, well, you've got, like, the Poles and the Italians with all their cavalry way out left. Way, I think, probably too far left, possibly. I mean, they, if they position themselves in this forest, then it makes it uh, a bit unnerving for the... Uh, the Prussians, they can't really then go forward. You stop the Prussians in their tracks, really. The whole right flank can't push forward because they're uh, then going to get threatened by a rear charge or just like just a flank charge, to be honest with you. Uh, if they put all that Italian and Polish cavalry in there. It looks like, I mean, this would be a nice target for artillery <laughs> right now. If any French artillery set up, they could do with just firing down this street. Certainly down here. Just go, like, fire down here. And you just, like, hit any of those Prussian infantry back there. Oh, it's like a howitzer or something like that. That would be really good. But it looks like the battle is moving uh, more rightwards. I mean, the uh, the Russians are actually getting quite a nice flank on here. No one's really uh, taking up this position. I wonder if whether they're just going to stick some of the 1812 French, try and hold here. They've got some uh, Poles still coming up. What's this? This is still Polish line infantry still coming up the road. They might take this right hand flank, but the uh, Russians are here at the moment. And uh, they're like in their revolutionary style uh, uniforms. Have a look at these guys just quickly. Very different early period sort of. Well, they're... Yeah, this is still a... I think this is Catherine the Great or Tsar Paul, or one of those two. That period is a... Uh, is that? But yeah, look at all this cavalry. This is Crassiers. You've got a... Is that a that's a big... That's 144 Crassiers in it. Jeez, that's a huge unit. Just look at the colours. Just look at those colours. Like, you can't tell me that they don't have... The Pionics and have some of the best looking uniforms. Like, it's just a great time. Glorious fire. And this is an artillery going off. There's a good hit there, actually. Taken out where... This is a, the general unit as well for the Poles. This is Joseph Pontaniowski here. He's a big uh, general unit. It's one of the uh, unusual things about, uh, like, the Poles. They like, have a huge unit. And now you can see the French are setting up. And they are opening fire. This is all line infantry, uh, light infantry, sorry. The gear is uh, light, I've been told. So, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, these guys aren't actually going to fire now. That's very sad. I kind of missed that. Just the pole, uh, not the poles, the Prussians just uh, pulling out of that combat. I'm definitely going to definitely mix up the poles and the Prussians at some point. Because they just begin with P. So uh, that's definitely going to happen, I imagine. But I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Uh, it seems like uh, not much is going on in the world of uh, of the battle yet. Looks like that everyone's still setting up. It looks like the, uh, the cavalry was going in for a few charges. And then after that, I thought, ooh. It's hauling up, but no, it's not really. Yeah, the Russians are really setting up why. Like, if they've got their cannon out here, that makes me assume that most of their armies out here as well. Like, they were assuming that they were going to be facing one of the four armies. And I guess rightly so, in a way. But, uh, no, they, they kind of actually be out positioned, to be honest with the Russians. But then also the French are out positioning themselves because they're now leaving this entire flank open to the Russians. Like, you can, I mean, the Russians are actually looking like they're falling back because they don't want to get surrounded, like, um, Left out by their allies. This is a good idea. They get, you can see some musketeers here. If you, this musketeer unit's falling back, my best, like my imagination is that they're probably getting the rest of their line back as well. I mean, you can see this unit's not moving, but surely they won't keep their army so uh, just like isolated and just spread out. And there, it looks like I can see like some sort of fighting going on. Oh, there is, has been some fighting. Yes, some uh, Ullens did go for a charge somewhere. Uh, I think they went for a charge, and they. Uh, oh, the ca French cavalry also went for a charge. I do apologise. So this uh, Hussar unit trying to go after all this infantry here. Not a bad idea, but I mean, this is a lot of infantry you're trying to take out here. Like, you're going to need a lot of cavalry to achieve that. And they could do with setting up this uh, infantry. They could just set up on this side of the... Yeah, here they go. Finally going up. Four units of uh, infantry here. Set, set it up. And then just absolutely hammer away at this uh, square. 
I love the light infantry uniforms. Volley men! Excellent, there we go, one of the first musket volleys of the battle. And yeah, they're just firing all the way over there, at that unit in square. Squares is a very vulnerable position to be uh, in if you're being shot on by uh, infantry. It's a nice, big target. You can see some of the men dropping over there. So that's very good. Very, very good. Good to see. What else have we got here? We've got a... Uh, well, this is all like musketeers stuff, sort of stuff. So, I mean, these guys are okay. Okay. The French probably need to, like, get a bit more infantry up on this side, I'd say. I mean, they've got some. That's great. But, I mean, they have like, a lot of cavalry, I guess, which also can help. But the French may be a little bit overstretched. And the French giving up all this ground on this far side. They're going to let the Prussians come across. I don't know if that was really a great idea. I thought they had the Prussians in a decent spot. Um, obviously, the French were in like a lot of open ground themselves, but they're now just like getting themselves around these houses. I guess they're going to try and defend the houses and uh, try and go for points that way. So, obviously, if you're new to NTW3, as you can see on the mini map, there are like little houses here in yellow with little numbers. So, you've got like a four back here, you've got ones dotted everywhere, and fours. You can win the uh, like the battle if you have the most points, uh, like most objectives, I guess you call it, by, which is then scored in points. Obviously, some are more valuable than others. Uh, so it looks like what the French are going for um, as like this line, this line infantry unit just shoots these uh, all into pieces. Such a waste. Surely the Prussian players realizing this is happening. They might be busy microing elsewhere. But yeah, he just lost a lot of men there. Um, but yeah, you can see that the uh, French have captured this building. It looks and they've got so much around this uh, building. I think they're going to try and defend this. Um, interesting. I, I found another unit that's uh, another Polish unit that the French brought. It's this unit here, the Grenadiers. This is a Polish unit. Uh, I think actually this white. Uh, no, that's also that's not. Grenadiers do 80, 86 uh, E. That's an interesting unit. Um, but yeah, so the uh, Grenadiers uh, Polonais. There is another Polish one. I'm pretty sure we've got um, infantry de Schwarzenberg. Uh, Schwarzenberg, who's a Pol, uh, not Polish. He's an uh, Austrian. Uh, General C. He's clearly at some point served in the uh, Peninsula campaign. That's kind of interesting. Got a tiny unit back here. 59 men. In, uh, La Guerre, La Légion. Légion. I don't know how to pronounce these things. You just gotta, gotta live with it if you think uh, like my pronunciation is not gonna be great. Uh, but, yeah, I try my hardest. I try my hardest. We've got a huge land bear unit here. This unit. It's not gonna be great. Not gonna have great morale. Uh, it's just a big like, unit. It can absorb a lot of fire like this. So it's just a huge unit. I don't even think half of these guys have muskets that work. <laughs> I probably don't. There they go. A few of these guys dropping. So yeah, it's a good unit to just like... Well, they're not even really going to waste ammo. It's pretty impossible to like use up all your ammo uh, in NTW3. But I mean, certainly... I mean... Certainly can. I mean, I, this is a bit silly. I don't know why the Prussians aren't moving forward. They've got like Deutsch Legion here. Oh, here we go. Maybe they just couldn't, didn't want to fire or something like that. There you go. They've got a decent volley off. But like, I was going to say, these guys can surely fire. But if they need to, move forward a little bit, because these uh, Lion Infantry here are just uh, like, well, they're doing a lot of damage, probably like that. Just chipping away. I mean, the Prussians here are getting a nice little, uh, this is certainly something I think they want to push. You want to get these uh, Landwehr up. I know it's only Landwehr, but push through this gap here, because the French are falling back. Um, but they're like, leaving a gap in the line here, so then like, you can then flank around and take these four units out. I think they made a mistake there, the French. They're falling, they're falling back too quickly and they're leaving some of their units isolated and I mean they're still waiting on their allies to arrive in fairness they're still waiting on the Italians to arrive the Italians are still miles away wonder whether they're gonna take the left flank against the uh, looks like they are gonna take the left flank against this, against this Prussian army if they can outmaneuver this Prussian army that'll be a huge win as well uh, the Swedes are now looking like they're gonna take the center against this French army here the 1812 army and they're uh, forcing them back they have five against two units there that long line of Swedes over there. This building has fallen to the enemy. A building has fallen to the enemy. Okay, so the Russians have gone out and taken this building. That's a smart idea. And now the Poles are actually uh, making an aggressive push. And that's a really good idea. This is a, a cannon here, a 12 pounder that could be taken out. I mean, look at this. These are, uh, and the Polish cavalry is really, really good. It's what they uh, they are really like designed for. Like, they could have a lot of cavalry. So it's kind of surprising that some of the other French factions brought so much. But yeah, the uh, Poles here doing their bit, leading the charge. Getting kills. Yeah, these Russians stand no chance. There you go, they're gone. They're gone. So that's a big win there. Taking out a gun there, 12 pound is a huge thing. I thought they might have had most of their army around it and like nearby, but the Russians are all the way over here. I thought they were going to fall back into the woods. 
Um, but no, they just have another unit randomly here as well. Musketeers. I take this unit out with the poles. Take this unit out. This unit's got to go. It's threatening your general to start with. Uh, so you could just take this out with Ullens, I think. It's very viable. And then they, I mean, they really need to sort this out. Like, the French need to make a decision. I don't know whether you're... The Poles are still making a move. I would be, like, marching these guys as quickly as possible now. Like, they desperately need these line infantry. They're outnumbered at the French currently. They've uh, been too aggressive. They won't wait on their allies to arrive. And uh, you can see that they're starting to make... Starting to open fire the Guard National here. Across the river. The Russians making the push. You can see through the smoke. The general's under attack. Uh, whose general is that? Is the Italian general is under Oh, it's um, Eugene de Bohonne, or whoever, however you pronounce that. He's Napoleon's uh, stepson. Fun fact for you there, if you didn't know that. So there you go. They have actually fallen back, these French. There's a good plan. They finally fell back. I think the Prussians should have been more aggressive. Shouldn't have allowed the French to uh, just, like, get these guys back unharmed. I think they should have... Uh, Try to make a push. I think they could have made a push through this gap. You can see we've got a big old fight going on. We've got a legion of the reserve here. Uh, opening fire. Fighting with the uh, musketeers across the river. I guess you call it a river or a stream, isn't it? It's like a stream more than a river. But yeah, they are uh, they forced them back. I think the French are giving up too much ground too early. I think if you... There's... there's there's time to retreat, and there's time to, ret to retreat. There you go, they've gone in at the poles. They were cut off, they had to get out of there. This unit, these poles here have also been cut off. Look at this, this is a real problem. And one of these is the Polish general. Like, he's in real trouble, is uh, Pontinowski. He needs to make a bolt for it, make a bolt for this French line here. And hard. Like, he's getting just sniped here by, uh, by the uh, Strelke. But yeah, I don't know what they took out. What did they just take out? They took out a Dragoon unit, and they got away with it. I mean, that's pretty good. They like, should definitely try and take out uh, some of these other units, like the Generals back here. Take out Sorov, or maybe uh, this, uh, like, uh, Cossack unit that's down here, Kazaki. But I mean, yeah, the Russians, I mean, they won't win a firefight. They won't win a firefight. So they need to uh, play this smartly for the Russians. They probably need to be aggressive with their infantry, they need to get into melee. I don't know what these Poles are doing. They're so deep in enemy lines. This is such a huge risk. Especially once since one's a general. Unless he's changed his general, but I don't think he has. There's more like dragoons here and hussars here. These are lifeguard units as well. Yeah, definitely not something you want to run into, but uh Oh, it looks like the uh, poles went in. I do apologize. I'm not paying attention to what's going on. The poles went in for the Ullens there. And uh, I think they went after some of the uh, sappers and some of this other stuff. But I mean they can form square. Look at how huge square they form. It's just so like such a big center. Um, but yeah, so they've been pushed back there at the poles. They've got like stuff all the way out here as well. Poles actually have a lot of cavalry um, like surrounding. They have a lot of cavalry surrounding the Russians. So I guess this units here aren't really cut off. They just need to be careful though. I mean, they are going to get run into the like Swedish reserve in a moment. Like they've got the lifeguards here. These guys. Oh, the Swedish army is like so bizarre looking. It also is just disappearing and reappearing. <laughs> so there you go. But yeah, they are very bizarre looking. Look at them. Oh, there you go. It's just, they just like to disappear and reappear sometimes. Don't mind them. But yeah, these are... I can't know... Are these surely these... Oh, no, these aren't... These are Landwehr. They're not lifeguards. I do apologize. Landwehr. They're probably Landwehr. They're also huge units. They're definitely not going to be lifeguard units. But yeah, at the moment, it looks like the French are in... Uh, Basically full retreat and because they keep retreating in some areas and they're not giving the memo to their allies or something like that They're then having to fall back even more like these guys here having to fall back because these French have given up like the crossing over there by the river I think they could have helped that like a few units of French could hold off hold off against a, a much larger Russian force It's just typical uh, the uh, light infantry unit getting outgunned here um, Which is kind of surprising It's only it actually it is uh, musketeers, but these are like uh, these light infantry on the side here got a nice little flank and volley They're firing just into the flanks of this uh, musketeer. That's nice. That's good. They got some good morale damage on that as well. It's on the orange already. But the uh, Prussian cavalry are probably going to come for them now. I think. Oh no, we're going to have some. Uh, we're going to have some uh, landwehr coming in. I, sorry, just like pause all of a sudden there. But we just got like some landwehr. I guess they just don't like the landwehr attacking. Do not like the land bear attack, and they are forming square, so that's, I guess, kind of a smart move. That will spare, like, stop a uh, an infantry charge to some extent, but not really. 
So there you go, you can see that's going on. I think these light infantry will lose. Light infantry will surely lose. Uh, they're getting supported actually by cavalry, and here you go. This is actually going to be the start of the fight. That's all it was. Like the main fight is going to start over one land veer charge. Surely not. But uh, they're sending some hussars to their own. That's a pretty. If I was the French, I'd get my hussars out of there. Just like this Karassia unit here has not done a great charge, and it's going to just get it shot down by these uh, light infantry here. Look at this. These guys just firing at will. And all those Prussians called Will, they're really scared. Right, they're not even in combat making the, the shouting noise, I like that. They're falling back a little bit, trying to like, get this unit back into the fight. They can't fall back too much more though, because they're already falling back past their cap point. The building that they were trying to hold for so long, they get, they've got to hold and fight for this. I'd use this as the linchpin. If you lose this, then that's when you fall back. But I mean, the Russians are really outpositioning. Uh, like the French, but I mean now the Poles have finally arrived. The Poles have arrived with their grenadiers, uh, of like the guard and all sorts of other stuff. Got line infantry here. Looks like we've got a lot of good stuff here from the Poles. And uh, yeah, hopefully these are, uh, I mean this is about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's about eight or nine uh, like infantry units. I mean that could hopefully put pressure on this uh, Russian flank. And uh, keep the Russians in place and allow the French to just kind of hold this straight line here. Just kind of just very, uh, very flat. Not very imaginative. Hopefully, I mean, you can see there, they're getting forced back again. They need to put a bit of an angle on so they can angle with the uh, Swedes and also fight the Russians at the same time. But what have they got in there? They, what have they got? We've got um, light infantry and we've got sappers. I guess the sappers will do a good job of holding this building. The Italians are finally uh, coming up, and it looks like the uh, Spanish, French, and the Italians are going to be facing this Prussian army. I wonder, this looks like it must be, this has got to be more than one Prussian army, I would have thought. But it's looking like a really good showdown here, to be honest. Here we go, the Prussians strike first with the first few musket uh, like volleys. Give me some uh, musketeers. Opening fire. I can't say I don't know what the Italians have got really good. Oh, look at that. Out of the gloom. Comes some Hussars. That's nice. They get a volley off as well. Those Hussars, they've got to move. They can't stay in no man's land. They're going to get charged as well by uh, some, uh, I think this is some Ullens. Yeah, some Landwehr Ullens. They did charge the guns. I think they made it to the guns. But the guns are actually, yeah, they're pretty low on morale. Uh, those Hussars are trying to get out of there, actually. This is actually a Chasseurs. Chasseurs, not sh uh, Hussars. They're actually trying to get out of there. And they did okay, actually. Did quite a good job. Now they're going to... The uh, Landwehr Ullens charging into the French. They're going to carry on the charge. This is a Hessian unit, I think. That's interesting. Oh, my God. That's point-blank range into those cavalry. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that cavalry's got to go. Yes, yeah, is this a Hess unit? Hess hoist the line. Yeah, this is going to be like... A German unit, then. Interesting. Yeah, they do look a bit... A bit of that part of the world. Interesting unit. In their blue. They nearly succeeded in taking the gun out. Nearly succeeded. And now the main fight is really in, uh, like starting, really. The French are... Uh, well, it's going on, on all sides, put it like that. And the Poles are making some nice ground. I mean, they're, they're uh, forcing the Russians back already. Look at that. Like, <laughs> any danger that has been averted here. And the French are making an advance already. Uh, they're, re like, re like, retaking ground they gave up. And they, this unit needs to fall back. If it's just, Don't stay in square. Whatever you do, don't say. Oh, there's French in here as well. This French Hussar unit just unwittingly just taken out a Strelke unit, uh, like a light infantry unit. And it's just in the middle of the lines. This square unit needs to open fire. The unit just here needs to just fire at will. <laughs> just kill these uh, Hussars. They could just do such a good job, kill them all off. And now because the uh, Poles have had like so many units behind enemy lines, like the uh, Swedes and the uh, Russians got a lot of troops just in. Reserve basically just looking at the uh, poles. I don't even think have they lost some of their units? I thought they had more like scattered around here unless they brought more back to this line. I think they have. I think they're all back here now uh, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. There's a lot of um, Polish units that could be like anywhere. I don't know where pontinowski has gone. He may be dead. Oh, no, he's not. He's all the way over here Look at this. They're still really wide. They're going so wide. Uh, I don't know what they're going for Maybe for a general Maybe I mean, there is some uh, stuff back here. But look at it. It's going all on here. The uh, Italians have really pushed on in. And there's a huge charge here. Huge infantry charge. Oh, my gosh. The Italians in there, like, sort of, like, light blue. And you've got the French in there as well. 
And the, I, I, these Prussians are just about holding. I think they might win it. The Italians certainly aren't doing so great. Look at this. The French are throwing in everything as well. It's turning into an absolute brawl. Sure, these guys shouldn't be just playing Rome 2 or something like that. Because, I mean, not playing Napoleon, but like that, really, are they? Like the firing in here. This firing point back into their own men. That's not a good idea. These Voltigeurs need to fire at something different. There you go. They're forcing the Prussians back now, finally. This is a big win here. And now the, it looks like the Italians are going to push up again. Here they come again. The Italians are doing more charges. Absolute madmen. They're going to get a few shots off of the Prussians, and now they're in. Oh my gosh. They got some really point blank charges off. Yeah, the, the Italians not doing well on the charge, but like that. Their morale just takes an absolute bomb. It's gone up now. Uh, maybe 2v1, they'll win that. This cavalry in prolonged melee here, this says the Dragoonia. I need to get out of there. But that's holding the line. This is holding back so much stuff. It's insane. The French need to go. Need to be a magistrate. They need to go wide. They need to go wide, take out this, like, uh, Jaeger unit and with like some cavalry just go wide. Well, there's so much being occupied here in the center now. If they can just send a couple of units around the uh, like round wide, they could just do a lot of damage. Um, cause even more panic, really. But this is uh, looking pretty concerning for the Prussians here. I'm just keeping an overview so I don't miss anything, really. I mean, there's so much going on in every front now. Like, the uh, I mean, this side's not, is it? I mean, it's exciting. Like, there's huge line battles going on, but like this over here. This is chaos. Oh, There's so much up. wavering. Apparently, it's already already done, this is battle. I mean, the French have taken the ground. You can tell this. And now they're setting up their their Polish units again. It's the Vistule Legion. They're doing their bit. So, uh, they need to like actually sort out their lines. They're not firing to the backs of each other. But yeah, they are not set up properly. The uh, Italians are like, carried on with some of their Dragoons and stuff like that. They've done... Quite well. I mean, now the, uh, they're sending in Dragoons to deal with the uh, Italians trying to retake the ground here. Absolute chaos. With the horses that have no... <laughs> horses with no men on them. There you go. It is all going on down there. We've got to, like, they've got land there like, in the next line. This is the problem. There's so much land there here. Like, it could definitely be broken through. And the French are going, are going for this left flank now. Not really in the area I thought they'd go for, but they are going to try and punch through. Going to try and take out this uh, reserve musketeer unit. It might be a good idea, but I don't know whether it will work. This is a huge Ragoon unit. 93 men. Um, they need to get it. They need to, I personally think they need to push around. They've got a unit here of light infantry. This could definitely take out the Jaegers. But, I mean, they need to get a cavalry unit like this Hussar unit. Go round here. There's a gap in the line. They are uh, really drawing in more troops here. They need to send in some infantry to support this fight with the cavalry. The French now are really... Um, well, it's just a big firefight, really. Who's got the more guns? Italians sort of, like, flanking here on the uh, Prussians. Or getting flanked, possibly, themselves. I don't know. Uh, the French could do a possibly uh, coming up to support this flank. Because the uh, Prussians are, are starting to uh, swing around the Italian formation. So, uh, yeah, I think the Italians have been outgunned, really. The French here need to sort out their lines. They're getting shot, shooting their own Italians in the back. I know the Italians are pretty useless allies, but that's no way to treat your ally. Look at the white uniforms of the Italians. They look glorious. White against, uh, well, dark and navy, really. You know, cavalry coming up. See the Dragoons are charging up. They're going to charge into these Italians. Definitely a weak unit to go for the Italian units. They don't seem to be able to take a good charge. This is a huge line infantry, a line infantry or line infantry unit here. I think it's line infantry actually. It's a huge unit. 169 men, or it was. It's a Prussian unit. It's a Prussian unit fighting against the Prussians. That's sad to see. And they have actually scared off that. Surprisingly, the Italians actually stood. And they scared off the uh, Prussians, so well done there. Look at that. Wow, I was not paying attention. And look at that. The French left has entirely broken. Oh, not the French left. The uh, Prussian left, sorry. The French left's broken through. This is, uh, yeah, Prussia's in chaos. Prussia's having, like, it's code black over here for, like, them. Over on this side, I mean, we'll go and have a look over here. It looks like the uh, the Poles are still doing good work here, along with the uh, French. They're pushing back these Russians. It looks like the Russians, I'd say, are possibly losing this. I mean, this, I can see a lot more rallying Prussians and Swedes than I can French and Poles. Um, they're not having a good time. Let's put it like that. They've set up a nice firing line here with the French. I mean, the, the Swedes and the Russians are 
quite chunked up here in their huge columns. Which, I mean, column does work. Is you fight well in column. But, uh... They might need to stretch out just to face all these uh, Prussians and... Not Prussians, the Poles and French. That's what I was going to say. Adler. The Swedes have got to be, um, no offense, one of my least favorite factions, I think. They just don't look very attractive. But they are quite good fighters. They turn up at the end of Leipzig and do their bit there. You can see lots more. Oh, there you go. The Poles in the back. Those, uh, those Poles that were flanking so hard with the general. Here you go. He's going for the... Uh, Going for the Prussian uh, artillery here. It's going to take it out. I mean, this is a huge win again. They got a six pound here. And I mean, all they've got to send out, like, to deal with it, it looks like some generals. Got some generals over here and, like, some uh, cannon crew. And they're going to just then fly into the back of this uh, Polish unit here as well. This is a general as well. Denon Witz here taking out him. And he's wavering. And there you go. A general's died. And now they can charge into the back of this. Uh, this unit here, and they're basically broken through of the poles here. They're causing havoc with these two units. I mean, they could lose their own general. Um, I don't know if they have. They, I don't think they have. But uh, they have. I think they've taken out the. Yeah, there you go. Enemy general is dead. They've taken out Denon Witz. That's huge. They need to get out of there, those poles. I don't know if they can. To be honest, so <laughs> they've just gone into an absolute hornet's nest. They need to get more support from their uh, Italian French allies. So just send up some of these infantry to make force stuff to turn around. And they're just going to fly into the back of this Landwehr unit. Not a bad thing to charge down, I guess. And they need to get out of there. They need to then get out, straight out of there. General here, uh, August von Nissu. If they can kill him as well, that's big. There you go. Looks like the Prussians are basically out. The Prussians are gone. The Poles are done. Uh, the Poles. The Poles and the French and the Italians, I guess. It was all three of them, really. Done a really good job taking out most of these guys. French are... Uh, Dealing heavy blows to what remains of these Pol uh, the Prussians. Told you, I'm going to mix up the Prussians and the Poles all day. All day. That's a Kohlberg Sarfield. There's a lot of German units here, actually, in this Spanish army. Poor uh, Germans have to fight in the uh, Spanish conflicts. But, uh, yeah, the French are open fire over here. There's just lots of musket volleys going off. Let's w watch some of these. Hopefully not going to be silent. Volley men. Or maybe not. Fair enough. There we go. There we go. Fire at some point. Doing their bit. Just a short willed occasional shots going off over there. Over here, I mean, it's just absolute chaos. Got Carassias here trying to hold the flank. Such an elite unit of cavalry, Carassias. They're breaking. Just nothing standing now that the generals are dead, and that was a really good flanking. That was... I'm surprised they didn't stop those uh, Polish cavalry. They just walked through that forest all the way over here. They walked literally, like, from here. Didn't run. Didn't do, like, anything, like, amazing. They just walked in a straight line. The uh, Swedes kind of just, have, like, didn't touch them. The Russians didn't touch them. And, like, it's come back to, like, haunt them as that decision. Because the Prussians are gone. They're, they've got, like, a little bit on this flank here. But I mean, I won't. It won't stand. The French are just in, they're just charging. They just there's no stopping them right now. It's just the cavalry's going absolutely mad, they're running down stuff. You can see here the yeah the Russians, oh, the Russians, the uh, Prussians here are just in a state of uh, panic. Need to form up some sort of a firing line here, and you can see the French are uh, charging down the streets as well, retaking the ground around the uh, main cap point. What is this? This is uh, Grenadiers the line. This is a good unit. Going into combat. The French just don't care. They're not even going to go bother with uh, like firing at them. It's a good idea at this point. And there you go. The uh, Grenadiers have broken. Apologies, I did have to go and uh, like do something. So like the recordings basically uh, like just there's like a little random cut in there, but for, for no real reason. But there you go. The Grenadiers now going in again, and they've got sappers in here as well. So there's some really good units. They're just taking out. Um, Look at that. They just push these guys back. Look at that. It's like a tidal wave. Oh, my gosh. These sappers with their uh, bearskin hats. Just absolutely annihilating that land there. These guys are just literally like poor farmers. They've just been raised up by the Prussians. It's like, no, oh, no, please, mercy. And these just sappers that just have no mercy at all. Cutting them down. You can see here that the uh, 
poles are now engaged. I don't know why it's got silent. Okay, there we go. It's been silent and then it's like muskets going off occasionally. It's a bit of a strange one. But uh, there you go. I mean, they're now firing all of a sudden. And then we've got uh, musketeers here. They're doing their bit. They're running away. It's a weird one. It happens occasionally, I guess, with NTW3. Probably doesn't help that I put, like, had to pause it to go in for a bit. There you go. Musketeers going off again. Good little volley there we saw. See the one further along. You see the silhouettes. It's great. They break. They did. These are... Uh, I guess the pole infantry isn't great. I mean, I, I think it's okay. I personally think I've, I've done quite well within some battles. I mean, it's not going to do well in this scenario. The Russians are clearing up, actually, the, the Polish infantry a bit. Um, uh, to be fair. But the yeah, Polish cavalry is still causing problems. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a good charge there. I mean, actually, to be fair, those Orleans might break for the... Uh, for the poles, they did. They actually did a trade there. Actually, no, they didn't because that, that's 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 um, the artillery crew. Yeah, these poles are not in a good state, actually. Maybe the general's dead for... Uh, he, actually, he must be. I don't know. Maybe not. No, he's not. He's. I don't think he is dead. The uh, general, like Pontiniowski over here, is still very much alive. He's in a fairly healthy unit. Uh, you can see the Swedes down here doing their bit now. They're forming square. They're worried about this flank. Can just see, yeah, and then you go. The poles are still causing so much uh, problems. They need to turn a unit around here. Uh, to the poles turn a unit around to face these Russians. We're now reloading. Can't hear them reloading. Here and firing. And there's a general dead there. Whose generals just died? Marshal Trevor's general died. Who is Pontinowski? There you go. He has now fallen. I mean, he has been a bit mad, to be honest, all day. He's been fighting in some interesting fights. I mean, yeah, he's down to 37. That's kind of no surprise. The Poles, they won't last much longer. But I think the battle doesn't really matter if the Poles are gone because the Italians and the French over here are uh, cleaning up house right now. I mean, you can see all this cavalry flanking around. This is a real problem for the Swedes. Like, the, the Poles have, did make the choice to go after the Swedish cavalry. Possibly could have just gone for the Swedish infantry. Could have gone for a Swedish general if they wanted to. Take out a general here, Von Essen. They've still got some units here of the uh, Swedes in the rear. I mean, they could do again these Jaeger, these Jaeger units up. They could be useful. Um, <laughs> certainly get them to defend this flank, which, I mean, is now getting overwhelmed with stuff. You can see the sappers are coming in. I think the uh, Vistula's back in here. Yeah, I think they are. The Legion of the Vistula. Maybe not. Maybe not, actually. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, they've got all sorts in. They're breaking it. They're just going down the line now, breaking everything. They can. Uh, I mean, the Russians over here, they're probably overextending a little bit too much, and this is going to allow the uh, the Polish cabs to come in and do some stuff. They're going to probably try and take out these guys. Artillery went off there, just put a big old hole in this uh, musketeer unit. They're falling back now. I think they realize that what's going to happen, so they're going to get charged by this cavalry here. Here we go. Polish cav, and goodbye Russian infantry. Those poor, poor guys. They did a really good job, to be fair. Have uh, the Russians. They did have a hard start. They were late to the battlefield. Um, but, I mean, they've done quite a good job. They held this left flank for a long time. They pushed back the French. And then, uh, and it seems to have dealt with the Poles. Uh, the Swedes, though, look at that. have just capitulated. I don't think much of the Swede infantry is very great. So, I mean, he did bring a lot of it. Um, so, I have a feeling that he's just got a large army of pretty poor quality. And you can tell, like, this... One unit of Karassi is basically on it, so it's routed so much of this army. This is insane. <laughs> like, this was a... You saw this line literally not... I, not two seconds ago. I literally just turned to go and have a look at the Russians. And the Swedes have just capitulated. There's about half a dozen, if not more, units breaking there. I wonder if Von Essen's died. I can't see his unit. Oh, no, he's here. He's very close to the front lines, though. He needs to be careful. The Karassis are exhausted. They've been pro basically run from the far side of the battlefield to here. Prussians have actually returned a little bit. <laughs> Look at this. This is a tiny little unit. Oh dear, and they charged. They're beaten. Uh, these, I bet these grenadiers would have won it anyway. They're Polish grenadiers. They would have won that fight. Um, but I mean, certainly with the help of the uh, tiny units of Chesse, uh, Cheval, they're doing the, doing the job. See, there are a few units being left over here by the French, just to make sure that the uh, Prussians stay dead. Just to make sure. I mean, the Poles are now making a final defense here. Well, we've got some, uh, some infantry forming square. Facing off against the cavalry. I mean, it's going to break. It's breaking, I think. Oh, it's not breaking, actually. It's just all the other units breaking through them. You need to just get some infantry up. Get some infantry up, charge them. 
get the uh, Karasius to go after something a bit more uh, easy. Something like these uh, units here. But I mean, this is probably basically the battle. Looks like the Russians are going to try and make a, uh, a, a retreat. And they're advancing, but just in the wrong direction, is uh, what they're actually probably saying. Because they are technically advancing. They're probably just they're advancing on these poles, pushing these guys back. Uh, but at the same time, they are sort of retreating. <laughs> like, they are running away from the French horde that is uh, like coming for them. Because it is a French horde. Uh, to Definitely can't get it wrong about that. What is that? It's just a Chevalier Galance unit. But yeah, the French players have done very well, to be fair. Well, all, all of the players have done quite well. I think they've all uh, done quite well. So NTW3 is such a great mod. It takes so much, like, tactical, like, uh, knowledge in now a bit to, like, do really well, I think. And uh, they've all done really well. I think, like, the Prussians, I think, just got caught out by one huge charge. They just didn't think they were going to, like, the French and the Italians were going to just do that. And I think that was... Probably the best move the Italians could do. I don't think their morale like can serve them well in a uh, in a prolonged melee or in a prolonged uh, like firefight against the Prussians. Even if the Prussians aren't great um, for morale, but I don't know. Maybe they could have. Maybe they couldn't have. Uh, certainly the French would have been fine. Uh, they could have possibly, I guess, slotted in battalions elsewhere where they were, like the line was weak. Um, but yeah, so I, I think they did a good job. They just got really caught out with the Prussians. And uh, the Russians did quite well. I think they were just a bit late. Probably they also expected to be facing off against uh, Poland or one of the French players. Um, a little bit more like one-on-one, -on -one, I think. Because they had their army so far wide. And then they had to come in. And they got to a bad start losing that cannon. But, uh, yeah. They did quite a good job. And they've now not been helped by uh, Sweden. Just, like I said, capitulating. Just <laughs> it's just gone. It has just gone. Von Essen's not going to combat against uh, some of these uh, Voltagers of... Uh, uh, the Legion of the Vistula. There's only 12 of them left. Jeez, they've been through a lot, these poor guys. And they're still alive. They've been cut down bit by bit, but they're still alive. The fighters, the sappers in here, or like not sappers, the Jaegers in here fighting off against some, uh, some of these um, line infantry here. Or the light infantry. Let's have a look at these guys. They look quite cool. Like I said, in their Alpine uniforms. Ready for the winter. Surprisingly, you needed to actually have winter uniform in Spain. It's kind of weird to think about that. Very sunny part of the world doesn't really need to have any uh, winter clothing, but you did. Look at this. This is like concerning. This is what happens to the Poles if they lose their general. Their artillery morale is not looking great. <laughs> They're not even threatened. They're just like, oh god, this is pretty scary. Firing off into the distance at the retreating Russians, or the Russians would say, advancing in the in the wrong direction. Um, but yeah, so I mean, they, yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of time now so the Russians get squeezed out. What's going on over here? Still, so, there's a poor Prussian unit that survived. Some reserve musketeers. Don't think they're going to survive very long. Getting charged down with Karasias, not Karasias, uh, Chasseurs. Chasseurs, Cheval. Yeah, they'll, they'll probably kill them. If they don't, that's a big win for the Prussians, I guess. They killed off a, uh, a weakened cavalry unit. They're just going around trying to get extra kills. Poor unit. Oh, then they actually might do it. I think they're going to do it. This duel is uh, going to be won by the, uh, by the uh, Prussians. <laughs> oh, dear. Come on, France. You're beating these guys already. Doing, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. They did. They did lo indeed lose. Please tell me they're not going to have to march all that way over just to go and kill that Prussian unit. Hopefully not. Hopefully it doesn't come down to that. I am going to just, uh, I think, fast forward for the sake of the video. Um, just because it's a good old long one. I mean, NTW3 battles are. They are. The best ones are long and enjoyable. We've got Grenadiers uh, coming up here. These guys are nice. Very nice units. Glorious. Glorious. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they are just... Doing their bit now. Making advance. I think the Russians should just make a stand somewhere. I don't know where they're going to... Are they going to try and fall back to one of these houses? I mean, I thought they'd fall back to this one. Uh, oh, no, they they were, they were in it, I was going to say. So, they could have. I guess maybe the Poles made it here first. The Poles with their tiny little section and detachments left. I think if they, if they just allow the French uh, cavalry... To rest, and they've got a good chance. The 
Prussians really just trying to attack this building. Very brave of them to send some Fusiliers in against some Sappers. I'll give them that. Uh, got some <laughs> Polish Grenadiers here. They probably might beat these 120 Reserve Musketeers because Grenadiers are just awesome in this game. Grenadiers are just like the bee's knees. And there you go. They beat those uh, Fusiliers, the, the uh, Sappers. So they did well. Uh, and yeah, we're just chasing down, just chasing down the uh, Russians now. Are uh, the uh, the French? And they've taken some more buildings. Excellent. Looks like they're going to set up here, the Russians. And they turned around. So. I'm expecting a stand here, boys. You're in the wrong area. You shouldn't be here anyway. You've got to die. It's over. And Surov is doing his bit there. Open fire on these uh, holes. They've got their morale pretty low, to be fair. I don't think they've got many kills. They're just scaring them off. This is some pretty good uh, uh, Polish infantry as well. So it's some of the best available to them. So, like I said, shows how poor the, like, the Polish morale gets, uh, or the Polish infantry is once the general dies. Don't know if it was really doing well before the Polish uh, general was alive. It wasn't a very uh, large Polish infantry detachment. A lot of cavalry, like I mentioned. I often bring a lot of infantry as Poland. I don't bring a lot of infantry as just generally any faction. Cavalry, I think, is really good, and obviously in NTW3. But uh, I think infantry, if you have enough of it, in the end can win the day. Especially enough good infantry can just form a square. Um, and then just use like whatever cavalry you use to play defensive. To defend artillery and generals. Usually what I do. Uh, it's my kind of my go-to tactic. Farmhouse taken. Okay, they just oh my gosh, how far away is this? That's one of the grenadier units. That's a very long way away. They've crossed the entire map to go and uh, take that out. So, I mean, well done to them. And here we go. Here's the final stunt here in this uh, tree line by the Russians. Do the Tsar proud, men. Do the Tsar proud. Or expect to go into the Gulag. Don't even know if they had gulags at this point. Probably not. Yeah, you, can see, you can see they're falling back. Like, oh, not falling back, but repositioning. Don't think they have cha chance to fall back now. The French are just so close. The French just swing around. Well, you can see the Italians in the background doing their bit. These guys look like National Guard, but they're actually Line Infantry, apparently. The Piedmont. Oh, no, these are Guard National. They are Guard National. I was right. These units here, Piedmont. This unit is nearly broken, to be fair. Doing some good damage here, forming square by the looks of it. Don't know why. There's a bit of cavalry, but it's not really like on any exposed flanks yet. They've got a gun. They've actually just set up a gun. Yeah, the Italians have actually managed to get an uh, artillery piece up here. To try and murder what is left of the poor Russians. I feel sorry for them. They don't deserve this. And here we go. The Poles are going to lead the charge once again. What I like to see. They might break, actually. They've got some really good charges off there. But uh, I actually think they might break. A general has died. I think that's uh, that's the Russian general dead. I think yeah, Sorov's just got killed back here somewhere. I presume it's the Russian general. It might not be. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> that has got to be the end of the Russians. I would have thought. Yeah, and the poles broke. The poles broke. I did think they would. I don't think it was really the best idea just to charge as soon as the Russians had fired their muskets. For the Tsar! Oh, they've got a little grenadier unit here. These guys have funny hats. I'd remind me like, uh, I don't know, 
Don't know why it makes me think it's like a misshapen bell or something like that. Don't know why. Very weird thought. Oh, poor guy just gets killed. No, Barry. Or oh, Boris. Boris is a good uh, Russian name. Yeah, need more charging going on, I think. Oh, there's the French having to go now, and the French have been a bit more successful. What do they send in? They send in some line infantry, I think. Just rally these guys. Now they're charging down the line. And the Grenadiers are next. No! All it needed was one good charge. It's going to break the Russian line. Uh, it's supported with cavalry as well. And they just. And it looks like the Italians just about set up their gun. Oh no, they've. They've uh, limbered it back up again. This seems a bit bizarre. Did seem a bit bizarre. What have we got here? Grenadiers? Or the Regio? This guy's cool. Quite a few of them left as well. In their white and red. Look at that. Oh. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, there you go. The Russians have, uh, they've held on well, but it's uh, not going to be enough. And the numbers and the firepower is showing, and there you go. Routing everything. And uh, I think that's the battle, basically. Now the French and uh, their allies have won. So uh, congratulations to them. And uh, there you go. We have the uh, the end results there. So uh, well done. So I think this was uh, this was sent in by R. Preve here, uh, the, who was playing as Italy. So uh, thank you for sending this in. And uh, very much appreciated. And uh, yeah, we'll have a quick look at some of the uh, some of the end results. I mean, we'll get. Um, I mean, well, let's just see. I mean, some large armies here. Yeah, the Poles had a very small army because they had like a lot of cavalry. And most kills. Look at that grim preacher hitting 4,100 kills. I imagine most of these kills are on the uh, Prussian retreating troops. Uh, the other French army doing very well, getting nearly 3,000 kills. Uh, I think it looks like this Prussian army here did the best, uh, played by uh, Uzo70 here. And uh, so, yeah, well done to all of the players. And uh, thank you again to uh, Arpri for sending this in. Very much appreciated. Have a quick look at some of the unit stats. Looks like one of the. Uh, Infantry units getting the best kills, 115, so not too bad. Then uh, we've got like some just generally infantry did quite well. The cavalry didn't really take part much by the looks of it. Or if it did, it just didn't get much kills. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, to be honest, most of the kills I think for the uh, this army just came from like those huge charges with helping the French take out the Prussians. So yeah, it did very well. Uh, Eugene would be very uh, happy here. And so would Napoleon being his, steps, his stepdad. Um, but yeah, so there you go, guys. If you enjoyed uh, today's battle, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe for new rounds here, and leave a comment to show your support. And until next time, Legionnaires.